Now that you've learned the basics of HTML and CSS, it's time to start doing what you really want to be doing is building websites. So we're going to work together from scratch. I have zero notes, so you're going to see how I would actually go about converting a Photoshop design into a real website. So for our design, I visited themeforce.net. This is a place you can go to purchase themes, anything from a WordPress theme to a HTML and CSS theme. And you can also purchase PSDs. And that's what I like to do. If you're not much of a designer, you can come here, find the PSDs, and by PSD, I mean Photoshop files for design, convert it yourself, and then you don't have to worry about your design skills. So this one was created by Collis Taid. Coincidentally, he is the CEO of Envato. So if we want to take a look at what we're getting, you see it's very simple. It looks like it's a grid-based, but it's nice and clean and perfect for what we need. So I will now purchase this, and I'm going to use my prepaid credit because I already have an account with ThemeForest. Next, I'm going to open up the zip file that I received, and you can see he has a handful of files here. Now he has white and black themes. We're not going to do black. I'm going to stick with white. So let's take a look at each one. Here's the home page, services, and work. So let's start simply by converting home. So now to keep this cohesive, I'm going to open up our new project directory where I have the basic skeleton that we've learned to use. And I'm going to create a new folder called PSDs. That way we can always refer to them. And I'll take these and drag them in. There we are. And now we're all set to get going. So these next tutorials are going to assume that you do have Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop installed. It's not free. However, if you visit adobe.com and browse to the download section, you can get a 30-day trial if you don't have it but want to work along. And if you do intend on sticking with web design, I really, really recommend that you go ahead and make that purchase, even though it is expensive, because it is the default for all web designers. So first, I'm going to take home. PSD and open it in Photoshop. Now, don't worry if you don't have much experience with Photoshop. I'm going to work through each step, but I will assume you have a modest understanding of, for example, the move tool will allow me to move my canvas and things like that. So if you're not familiar with it, just follow along and it should begin to click eventually. So the way we convert a PSD to HTML is first, we don't slice anything out. We begin by creating our HTML as we always have. So this is a good point to start analyzing how we would create the markup for this. As I see things, we have a header at the very top. We do have a wrapper because notice this entire website is centered as we've learned to do. So it makes sense to have some kind of wrapper and then the header. And we could include this part with the header as well. That's just up to us. And then we have uh, some information about the services they offer. And then finally, at the bottom, we have a footer. So notice this is a very common layout. You have your header, you have maybe a banner, and then you have some information below and your footer. This is quite common for all websites, so you should get used to it fairly quickly. So let's get started. I'm going to open up our project within Sublime, and we have a blank slate. The first step is to create the markup, and we're going to take advantage of Zen coding, which I taught you in a previous lesson. If you're also working along in Sublime text and you have Zen coding installed, you can press Control Option Enter, and that's going to bring up this panel right here. And what's nice about this is you can write your Zen coding, but it is displayed on the page in real time, so you know exactly what you're getting. For example, if I type ULLI, you see that it's updating instantly. So let's get started. We're going to begin by building a div with a class of container. Let's refer back. And within here, we're going to have a header element. We know that for sure. So let's do that. Header. And within the header element, we have an h1 tag that says black and white. So we'll do h1, black plus white. And then he also has a navigation section. And we're going to place that within the header as well. So we're going to create a sibling to the h1. Notice if I did this, it would add within the h1, but we need a sibling. Now we know a nav will contain a list of navigation links, so I will add a ul. And within the list item here, he has one, two, three, four, five. He has five list items. And each list item, of course, this should be clickable because it's a link. So we'll place an anchor tag that links to nowhere for the time being. And that looks good for now. So I will hit enter for that to take effect. And now I can tab through each one of these. I'm going to fill these in really quickly. So good, we are done with the wrapper and the header, but we should probably 
place these two images within it as well. Now, how do you convert images that have text? Because we want it to be searchable. So in this case, he has a background image, but for our project, we're gonna use HTML to add the text within it. So really, we just need a section for the image. So for the time being, right after the navigation, we'll have a image, but I would like to be able to target it. And because it's the only image within the header, maybe we can leave it blank for now. But if we need to be more specific, we can always add a class later. And then next right here, this is blank. And that means it could be anything. It could be another stock photo. It could be anything at all. He's left it blank for this case. So we will as well. The next step is to work on our main content area. So let's use that keyword main. I'm gonna create a new div with a class of main. And within it, we have three columns essentially. So why don't we separate these and we'll say each one will have a div and we'll give it a class of grid. And because we know that we're going to use eventually the 960 framework, which we discussed, and that's 12 columns, we can figure this out on our own, even though we haven't yet implemented the 960 framework. And let's consider this. It's not divided into thirds because these two right here are much wider than this one. So why don't we consider maybe rather than each column being a grid four for one third, four times three is 12. Why don't we say five, five, that's 10. And then we need two more, which is 12. And we can play around with it if we need to. So we'll say grid five. And why don't we create two of those? Now within each one is going to be a H1 tag and I'm gonna leave that blank. And then after that, we have just some gibberish text. So I will add a paragraph after each one as well. And I'm gonna hit enter so I can tab through these. First, we have services we offer. And within here, we're gonna add some lorem text and the same thing for how we work. Notice it's just a matter of going back and forth and converting it. So now let's do this last one and this is a quote. So I can either press the letter T or click right here to select the text tool. And I will click and highlight that so I can copy it. And now we're gonna create another div and we're gonna try out grid two, though that might still be a little bit too short, but we'll play around with it. And this grid is gonna contain a block quote. And within the block quote, we'll have a paragraph tag that contains that text like so. Isn't Zen coding really neat? After the block quote, we have some information about who said it, but we're gonna come back to that shortly. And then if we come back here, we have read more buttons under each column. So we'll add those as well. We'll place that within a paragraph tag and then it will be a link read more. And because I know I want to style these specially, I'm going to apply a class of button like so. Next, I'm gonna come down and paste it for the next grid. Notice I haven't yet even looked at this in the browser. I don't need to. Now we're going to copy this. And why don't we just grab all of this text and place it in like so. And because he had two paragraphs, I'm gonna make sure that I do the same as well. There we are, that looks clean. And he has the exact same thing for the second column. So we'll do it once again and I'll copy and paste that in. And in this case, it looks like he has one more at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. This is dummy text. It's simply a way to represent what a real website would look like. All right, and that section is done. So now let's take care of the footer. And all he has here is black and white themes via theme forest. So we'll place this at the bottom right here. Now I want you to notice, can you see how very quickly, once you have lots of divs, it can be difficult to determine which div is closing which. And that's why we use indentation because I can easily tell that this div is the closing div for this one. However, if you need more, perhaps you can't see what this one closes, you're always welcome to add comments. And we do that with this syntax. And within the middle, you can say end container. This is purely preference. I sometimes do it if I find that I'm forgetting what a closing element is. Now, right here, let's add our footer. And within the footer, I'll scroll down just a touch. We are going to have a simple paragraph tag that contains that text. What we can see here is, should black and white be clickable? I don't know, we would have to ask the client, but it is bold. So we're gonna make that strong. And then likely Theme Forest is a website, so we should make that clickable. So first I will wrap that, and we do know where that one's going, so we can put in the link right now, themeforest.net. Next, black and white we decided should be strong. So I will wrap that within strong tags as well. And we do need to add this text right here. Some slick phrase would go in here to sum up what the business actually does and stands for. So let's come back to the top. And because we know this section is sort of a banner, why don't we wrap it within a div? And within here, just to begin, I'm gonna have a paragraph tag 
And what does the paragraph say? This text right here. And there we are. And then rather than using an image here, why don't we apply this big image as a background because it's really not important to the website, it's a background. So let's remove that entirely. Now, just as we noted that each of these sections right here is a grid, we can tell that this one right here is the width of both of these grids below combined. And we hypothesize that each of these is grid five, so that would mean this would be grid 10. So for now, let's add that in. In addition to banner, we'll give it a class of grid 10. And we also know from working with 960 in the previous lesson that the wrapping class should be container 12. Then after this, we can have our empty box and we'll place it right after it, div grid two. And we'll just leave that blank because presumably it would be filled with some text or images or links. But we don't know what it is for our hypothetical client. So we're going to leave it blank and then they can tell us later. All right, so this looks good for our home page. We did it fairly quickly. Now is the point when we get to view it in the browser. And here we are and you can see nice and clean markup. Looks perfect. This is what you want to see because you always think if I were to disable CSS and JavaScript and images, would my website still be understood by the reader? And in this case, absolutely. So in the next lesson, we're going to get started slicing our PSD.